However, I cannot in good faith recommend that you go buy a KTM anymore because a little bit of damage to the frame and your bike could potentially be down for eight months. Alrighty folks, welcome back to the show and today a very special guest. Uh, my old SMCR is finally back after eight months at TJ Cycles getting a massive, massive repair. And I wanted to give you guys an update on why this bike is suddenly vanished and basically what's going on with it. So let's dive right on in. All right, so everybody remembers when I first released a video on this, uh, probably two years back now. I think it was October of 2019, if I think. Um, that video actually did really well uh, throughout the last couple of years. It's up to like 30,000 views now, which is super, super cool. And I wholly intended to create a lot more content with this motorcycle. However, uh, throughout 2019 and 2020, I was crazy busy with work and I lost a lot of time. And then in 2022, this motorcycle was down getting a brand new frame put into it. And uh, we're going to talk about all of that. But first, I did want to update y'all on the mods that I've done to this motorcycle. Because I intended to do like a full-on series on it, but uh, never got around to it. So, first and foremost... Aero exhaust. I uh, got rid of the big can that was on the back of this motorcycle, and it has helped the heat issue. If you all remember, uh, the big giant can on here was exhaust and catalytic converter, and that caused a lot of heat to build up under this panel, and it was actually dangerously hot. I burned myself on it several, several times, which sucked. So we've got the aero exhaust on there. Still on the stock header, however, I have removed the O2 sensor on here. Uh, it's still sitting in the pipe, but I have a dongle that's basically deleted it. And then inside, I do have a Power Commander 5 with the base Rottweiler tune on here. So that's just for the exhaust. You will note that I still have the uh, SAS system on here, and um, it's still on the stock airbox. So... It's been a minute. I do have all the parts though to delete the SAS and put the new uh, faster airbox in. Super excited about that. Now some cosmetic stuff on here. We've got the Rottweiler uh, bar ends with the CRG arrows on here. I have TST blinkers and then I have T-Rex uh, case sliders so uh, and axle sliders. There's a few other things here and there. Um, I've got some orange... Uh, little bling mirror mount covers uh what else this is the power parts seat which isn't all that much comfortable than the uh, stock seat little rock form doodad here a uh i've got the heated grips on super nice because i do ride in the winter and then somewhat ironically which we'll talk about in a minute i have a front rotor uh pin lock so basically this is, uh, well, I guess it's called a road lock, but essentially what you have is you put a pin in here and uh, you turn the key and you move the front wheel until it, you hear it ping and a little rod is now sitting inside the front caliper and you can't move the bike. So that is going to come very handy in a minute. So let's get on the road and uh, talk about why this bike needed a brand new frame but first let's let's just get a little bit of a, you know, a little something something yeah it's still a nice bike alrighty so getting underway here let's talk a little bit first before we get to the frame situation with uh, how my thoughts have developed on this motorcycle over the since the last time I made a video on it. Well, uh, I did get the suspension tuned to me a little bit. I still, I, I feel really bad because uh, Roger at On Road Off Road out in the hills here became a Rottweiler uh, 
distributor so that he could put a preload collar in here and we can get a new spring in here. I wholly intend to go back and upgrade the rear spring and stuff and do all of that. Because at high speed, uh, I do get some speed wobble out of this motorcycle. And I think what's happening is because I'm heavier, uh, this spring is working double time and uh, I can't put enough preload in here to dial out the sags. So what Roger ended up doing is working with the front suspension a little bit so that it, it balanced out. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. He did a great job and I highly recommend to anybody out there, if you are on a motorcycle with an adjustable suspension, and you're getting speed wobble and you're thinking well i should just go get a steering damper no go get your go get your suspension set up uh chances are it's going to be cheaper i paid roger like 50 bucks cash or 60 bucks cash i don't remember and it took him like an hour uh and we got a much improved setup but it's still not perfect and i gotta go back to him so Obviously, handling on this motorcycle is great. And what I would consider the stage one tune on this bike, yeah, it's pretty solid. Um, I don't know that it's significantly snappier. Uh, I do notice that down low, when I'm leaving a stoplight, it is a bit more lively because it's just got more gas. That's what the uh, O2 sensor delete does. Is it, um, oh man. Uh, testing my deep lore knowledge here. It disables the closed loop fuel system, which below 5,500 RPM restricts gas to like 14.3% AFR, um, which is really lean, I think. Um, you'll, you'll have to go check out the guys on Rottweiler. They've got a really great video on exactly what the O2 dongle does. It has been a hot minute since I've thought about that, so I'm sorry if I said it wrong. But, you know, it's uh, it's pretty peppy. It was always peppy, but it's definitely peppier. I would argue that most of what I'm getting is just butt dyno effect from the exhaust being louder, though. Uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of what happens when you put an exhaust on your motorcycle is you get a little bit more feel and that extra feel translates to oh i'm going faster but it might not so i'm really looking forward to getting the airbox in i've had it for a couple of months now actually just sitting on a shelf but i haven't had the motorcycle uh last thing i want to talk about mods wise because this motorcycle is famously good at catching false neutrals between one and two and five and six I decided to get the Factory Pro shift rod, which was like 150 bucks or something like that, which is comically overpriced for a piece of metal with a uh, ceramic roller on it. And essentially what you have to do is you have to take off this panel right here by my foot, right there, so you can get in underneath the clutch. And it's just this little rocker arm and it's supposed to have a thicker, heavier duty spring and better rollers that are supposed to help the bike stop catching false neutrals. Well, the bike still catches false neutrals. So uh, is it any better? I don't know. It's certainly a lot stiffer of a shift, which can be nice because a lot of times the shift feel was a little mushy when you were going for the quick shifter. but. Given what ended up happening with that install, I would not recommend it because I was going to insert the screw to mount the thing back up and everything was going hunky-dory. I had the bike on its side, so I didn't even have to drain the oil. And then, you know, I'm just sitting there threading the screw in by hand and uh, the screw's about that long, maybe. And I'm sitting there going like, yeah, okay, it's, it's still going. Boy, oh boy, this screw is still threading. And, uh... After, you know, probably a dozen turns where it was refusing to bottom out, I just pulled the screw out. I, I literally could just pull it out. I had not put a wrench to this thing, uh, and it had pulled the threads out of the engine, so I had to put uh, helicoils in there to get it to work again, because 
the cases are so thin on this motorcycle. If you have to do any engine modifications to this bike, you just better have heli coils on hand and know how to use them. But that's the update on the motorcycle. Let's get into story time as to why I did not have this motorcycle for uh, eight months or a little over. Um, okay, so it is November. Cast your mind back to November 2021. Uh, you're in the middle of COVID and you can't get anything in. Actually, no, this was October. October 2021. So even earlier in COVID and everything is messed up. And you are an enterprising motorcycle thief who wants himself an SMCR. So you roll up to my house and you try to steal my motorcycle. What you fail to realize is that this motorcycle, A, has a tracker in it, B, had a massive heavy duty kryptonite New York news chain on it, and three, had a pin in the lock or in the front rotor, so you couldn't move the wheel even if you wanted to. But you're all cracked out, so what you do is you just take a screwdriver and jam it right into my ignition. <laughs> and you screw up my ignition barrel. Good job, you. You did great. Uh, I'm going to give you a D for effort. You didn't fail. You, well, I suppose you failed successfully because I could still ride my motorcycle. So good on you. Uh, unfortunately, my ignition barrel completely screwed. Um, it was a pain in the ass to get it to the point where I could actually get a key back in the ignition. Um, and I call up Progressive and I'm like, hey, somebody tried to steal my motorcycle. And they're like, great, you're covered. But it's going to be your deductible is $500. Uh, actually, it was 750 at the time because I have a vanishing deductible. But anyway. Your deductible is 750 bucks and the new barrel is 250. So you're gonna have to pay it out of pocket. I'm like, all right, whatever, that sucks, but I'm, I'll pay it. And so I call up my local dealership and I'm like, hey, I have a 2020 690 SMCR that needs a new ignition barrel, new keys, and a new gas cap because it's all keyed to the same thing. And they're like, cool, you'll have it sometime because this was October 2021. Uh, nobody knew when I was gonna get this ignition barrel and I was calling them like every other week. I'd give them a call and be like, hey, is it back? And hey, is it back? Hey, is it back? Nope, nope, nope. They, they couldn't find an ignition barrel for this motorcycle. It just couldn't be done. I called a bunch of dealerships to see if anybody had them on hand for whatever reason, but nope. So I was like, okay, fine, whatever. The motorcycle is rideable because I've mangled the ignition barrel even more um and i've got the lock on there i doubt anybody's going to try again to steal this motorcycle uh so i ride it through the winter of 2021 lo and behold it is now january 2022 and you that same enterprising crackhead decide that you would like to try again to steal my motorcycle this time, though, you've watched a couple of YouTube videos. You understand that just jamming a uh, screwdriver in the ignition barrel ain't going to do it. You need to crack the frame lock on this thing so that you can straighten out the handlebars. Wouldn't you know it? You leveled up your thieving skills. Except this moron didn't do it right. And what happened is they ended up breaking the frame instead of the pin. The way, that, the way that you're supposed to break a frame is you're supposed to snap it really fast, right? This is kind of, uh, I'm not teaching anybody anything. This is Motorcycle Theft 101, guys. And if you're around motorcycles, you're just gonna learn this the hard way. Motorcycle Theft 101, to unlock a locked set of handlebars, what you must do is snap the handlebar really, really fast. What I think ended up happening is this dude just pulled on my handlebars, pulled and pulled and pulled, and ended up cracking the frame instead of the pin. Because the pin is solid steel, and the frame is a chromoly mix of all kinds of fancy uh, metals that are actually really soft. So the pin doesn't give, the frame does. And I walk out to my motorcycle one day, 
And I look down and I'm like, okay, yeah, I still have the existing damage because this panel actually wasn't on the bike anymore. Uh, but I'm also looking and I'm like, those cracks are new. Oh, those cracks are on my frame. Uh, okay, somebody tried to steal this bike again. So I call up Progressive a couple months later and I'm like, hey, somebody tried to steal my motorcycle again. And guys, remember at this point, again, tracker, frame lock, uh, kryptonite, New York noose, and the pin lock in the front wheel. This motorcycle is not stealable. Uh, and so I call a progressive and they're like, yeah, okay, great. Um, you've got frame damage. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take it to the dealership. We'll send somebody out to take a look at it. I was like, fine, whatever. Okay. I'm going to lose a lot of time on this. Uh, so I was like, okay, it'll be like three months probably. Right. Oh, sweet summer child. Was I ever so wrong about that? <laughs> um, I was very wrong. So uh take it in and they're like yep you need a new frame and i was like okay cool so the bike's totaled and they're like no 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 uh broken frame on a ktm that's only two thousand dollars and it's 10 hours worth of labor at 150 dollars an hour so the damage 3500 the motorcycle twelve thousand dollars plus all the mods your motorcycle is not totaled <laughs> so i was like okay how's gonna get how how long is it gonna take to get a frame in I'm like mm, I, don't know. I don't know so i sit and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and all the time the motorcycle is at the dealership and had i known that it was going to take this long to get the frame in i would have just kept the bike and kept riding it but you know things being how they were I was just like okay let's let's wait also I do believe that the guys at the dealership lied to me uh here's how here's what they told me they were like we need to have the motorcycle on the lot so that the second a frame becomes available we can start working on it now if anybody has ever been to a motorcycle dealership they know that the second something comes available we'll start working on it has never ever ever happened in the history of ever but like a dumbass, I believed him. And I was like, okay, sure, whatever. Hang on to the bike. I get pissed. And in May, I go steal the motorcycle back from him. And I'm like, hey, you just call me when the frame is done. And so I post on Instagram in May. Hey, I got my motorcycle back. It's still not fixed, but it's, it's mine again. Uh, literally the very next day, I get a call from the guys at the dealership and they're like hey your frame's available and i'm like you're kidding me right you... what happened my guess is that i went in and i was throwing a fit that day when i was in there i was like you guys are taking way too long this is total bs let's figure something out here and i think uh because i was talking to the manager things actually got done i went full karen and things actually got done so sometimes worth going full karen God, man, this thing, you know, despite all the bullshit I went through with this, very fun motorcycle. So once they have the frame in hand, what they have to do, or once they have the, the list for the frame, they're like, okay, we have it reserved. What they needed to do is they needed to cut the headstock off this bike uh, so that they could send, because that's the part that has the VIN. So they send that back to Austria via some old dude, uh, probably the same guy from Old Man in the Sea who's just paddling all the way from Austin to Austria, uh, probably over the Alps and not through, you know, rivers and stuff. He's actually like just slowly pushing this canoe up the Alps and then he slides down it. Um, they get the headstock, they stamp the VIN on the new frame, they throw the old um, headstock into, I don't know, the fires of Mount Doom or whatever, uh, so that there aren't two bikes with the same fr uh, VIN number out there. And then they give the frame back to the old man in the sea and he starts rowing and rowing up the Alps and across the Atlantic. And sure enough, the frame gets here like four, five, eight weeks later. And then it takes these guys two months to rebuild this motorcycle. Um, 
it took way too long for these guys to actually put the thing together. 10 hours worth of labor across two months is just silly. So again, I'm like, whatever, whatever. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And then finally, finally, I get the call. Hey, your SMCR is ready. It'll cost you $1,030 to bail it out. So my, my deductible is $750. I'm not going to complain about that. But the problem is I couldn't repair the damage from the original theft attempt so it went in with existing damage and my insurance company wasn't going to cover it so uh, you know I ended up having to pay a ton of cash to get this thing fixed so essentially what happened is because one crackhead decided he liked my motorcycle better than I did I lost eight months with this bike and had to spend over over a thousand dollars to get it fixed And this is where we get to kind of a warning, shall we say, about KTMs. These motorcycles are amazing. They're so much fun. They're really, really, really cool. And I do not regret buying this motorcycle. I still stand by everything I said in my first ride of this bike. However, I cannot in good faith recommend that you go buy a KTM anymore because a little bit of damage to the frame and your bike could potentially be down for eight months. Now I know, yeah, there was a whole bunch of extenuating circumstances that made this situation a whole heck of a lot worse, but eight months is ridiculous regardless. And I'm not pleased with the way Progressive handled it. I'm not pleased with the way my dealership handled it. I'm not pleased with the way KTM handled it. Which is a real bummer because at its core, I still love this motorcycle. Ton of fun. So, please, if you're out there considering a KTM, heed my warning. The frames on these motorcycles are not cheap enough or not expensive enough to total out your motorcycle if somebody tries to steal it. And theft is a huge deal when it comes to motorcycles. So if you cannot store your motorcycle in a secure garage, don't buy a KTM. Just don't, it's not worth it. Buy, buy a Jixxer 600 where if they snap the frame, it's an aluminum twin spar that costs thousands and thousands of dollars and uh, your motorcycle becomes worthless after that. They'll total you out. And it's a real shame too, because these bikes are so much fun. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna recommend you guys something that could potentially have these massive issues later down the line, you know? Alright, little highway pull here getting on the highway, running through the gears. It's still pretty quick. It's not the fastest thing in the wide world, but you know what? For a single cylinder engine, this thing puts down a surprising amount of power, even without the air box. Okay, so the obvious question that y'all are probably gonna ask at this point is, are you going to keep the SMCR? And uh, you know, I've actually gone back and forth on this. I quite famously, on a Yamcast a couple months ago was like, as soon as I get it back, I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna go buy myself a Sportster. And I still really, really want one, but I've been thinking about it more and more. And I'm like, you know what? First of all, I have the motorcycle. So let's just keep working on it. And let's keep riding it. Let's at least enjoy it through the end of this season. So I probably will ride it through the winter uh, and maybe in the off months, I will consider selling it again. But in the meantime, I really do want to see what this motorcycle can do. I really, really do. So there's a lot of stuff I want to do to it. I want to get the airbox in, which I'm probably going to go do tomorrow at time of filming, uh, which is part of the reason why I wanted to go down Lime Creek was just so that I could get a feel for the general rideability of it and it's sort of the power. I did all my hooning off camera. Story time I wanted to focus, so I'm sorry if LCR was a little uh, a little boring this time around. But I really want to see what this thing's capable of. I want to take it back to Crescent 
and I want to do a track day on this, a proper track day, now that I sort of know what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, I want to go, I want to do a little bit of traveling on it. I want to do some more mods to it. <laughs> this thing is a cool platform. It's just, if somebody tries to steal this goddamn motorcycle again, I'm going to throw it in a lake. I swear to God. Um, I cannot go through what I went through again with this motorcycle. So there has been a good deal of love lost between me and the SMCR. It's still a great motorcycle, don't get me wrong, but for my situation, it's probably not the best. So if you are interested in seeing some more stuff about the uh, KTM here or I've got the KLR, which I do still need to do the doohickey too. I got a whole bunch of stuff in the pipe that I'm working on because I have a little bit more free time to make videos again on my own time, which is great. I'm really, really excited to get back to making my own content. So if you are interested, click all the links down in the description below, get yourself subscribed and all that stuff, and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.